Number 10 then, from paper 1 of the 2021 Higher Math Resource paper, four marks here for factorise this cubic expression. Factorise it fully. That's all it says you have to do with it for the four marks. Well, you'll like that because that means you get to put down your little synthetic division table. There are other ways of doing it. In the marking scheme, it mentions the business of actually just finding a value that makes this equal to zero. But that leads to a different technique. What you're going to do here is use your synthetic division table to find a value that takes you to zero because it's more useful using this. Well, notice there's only three terms, but it's a cubic so there should be four terms there. So one of them is missing. There'll be a zero here somewhere. You've got the x cubed term. That's six. You've got the x squared term. Negative 30. I haven't got an x term. That'll be a zero. And there's the number on its own. But now the problem becomes it doesn't give you any clue. There's no graph anywhere which might tell you one of the numbers that might give it a zero. So you just have to do some trial and error. But it's not completely trial and error. You're not completely in the dark because you know that when you're multiplying brackets together, the first times the first times the first gives the first, and the last times the last times the last gives the last. So whatever these numbers are, they've got to multiply to give a four. So what have we got? We've got one, two, and four. So that plus the plus and minus each of each of them. Well, you can see the one won't work because one won't change any of these numbers. So that's not going to go across. When you put the six onto that, you've got a seven and that just carries on to the four. So forget that. So we'll try the two. So let's bring it down, multiply it up, 12, that's looking promising, add it down, multiply it up, negative 2, bring it down, multiply it up, negative 4, there you go, that wasn't too hard. So 2 worked. Now what that really says, there's two ways of interpreting this. This table is a dual table, it does two things at once, it's an evaluation table, you could call that a nested table. This lets you evaluate this expression. Whatever you put in here will be the value that this will come to. So if you could put in a value that comes to zero, that means you've found a root of that equation equal to zero. If you're talking about roots. But since we're talking about factors, we're going to look, this, look at this as a division table, synthetic division table. And what this says is, if you were to divide this by the factor x minus whatever, this would be the remainder. So now I can say, right, that says the remainder equals zero. Well, that means it divided in exactly. That means that x minus whatever you put in is a factor. That's the first bit. And of course, the useful thing here is that's the other factor. Now, there was two marks there already. There was one for using the synthetic division table properly. So let's remember to put that zero in. There was another mark for finishing it off and getting that linear factor. So now we can pop over here. So I know the linear factor is x minus 2, and I know that the remaining quadratic factor is this one. 6x squared minus 1 lot of x minus 2. There's a mark just for interpreting that. So these three marks have just come from using this table. And the last mark, which is to factorise that yourself, you just do yourself. Well, one thing is, it ends in a 2, so it can only be a 1 and a 2, given that it does factorise. You can check the discriminant. If the discriminant's a perfect square, it'll factorise. 1 and a 2. So it just leaves this. Is it a 6, 1? Or is it a 3, 2? Doing that both because it could be either way around. But you can see it's going to be a 3, 2. So with a 3, 2 for a difference of 1, I'd want the 2 there. That'll make a 4 for the outer and the 3 there. 2x, 3x. And to get a negative x, I want the larger one to be the negative. And that's it. That's it done. Now, it does mention or in the marking scheme. There's not a lot in the marking scheme because it wasn't, wasn't a real exam. But it does say, or instead of doing this, you could just try and use this part to find a number that works to give zero as an answer. Except you wouldn't do that because you'd want to do it here so you've got this useful part here afterwards. Well, you could do that, and that's what you would have to do if you didn't know about synthetic division tables. You'd have to take this form 
and try and find a number that works that gives zero as an answer. In other words, try and find a root. Because if you found a root, you found a factor of the expression. And it wouldn't take you long to come up with two. So it said, or you could do that to get x equals two. And then reinterpret it, x equals two, which means that the factor is x minus two. Well, so from that, you could then say, or they would then say, right, I've got this expression. I know that two is a root. That means that x minus two is a factor. But what's the other factor? Because with synthetic division table, it told you it straight away. How would you get it here if you didn't know about this? Well, you'd have to use the fact that the first times the first gives the first, because no other term affects that. So x times what gives this? It would have to be 6x squared. The last times the last gives the 4. Well, two twos are 4, but a negative, it would have to be a negative. So I've got them. But I don't know what the middle term is because they're mixed up, various terms joined together to make them. So I don't know that straight away, so I'll just say plus something like px. But you can find that from this term you haven't used yet. How would you make the x squared term? Well, what would make an x squared? To make an x squared, I'd either have the x times the px, so that's a px squared, or it'd have the two times the six x squared. So minus, I mean, minus 12 x squared. Those are the two combinations that would give me an x squared. And that should come to negative 13 x squared. Of course, you didn't need to write in the x squareds. You could just have said P minus 12 equals negative 13, which is what I'm, I'm just going to do in this bit here. So that would have to mean that P is equal to well, the negative 1 and a negative 12 makes that. P would have to be negative 1. So now you've got it. x minus 2 times 6x squared minus x minus 2. And then it's the same as before. x minus 2. Factorise that yourself now. 3x minus 2. 2x plus 1. And that would be the way of doing it without using a synthetic division table.